Photosynthesis is a reaction, and just like any other reaction, it can be sped up or slowed down by certain factors. Today, we're going to look at the four main factors affecting it. You can use my Bioenergetics workbook alongside this video to get the most out of your revision time. It's got tons of tasks and pictures and exam questions to check what you've learned. The link is in the description below or head over to emmatheteachy.com. One factor that can affect the rate of photosynthesis is light intensity. In the previous video, we learned that photosynthesis is an endothermic reaction, so light is needed to transfer energy to the chloroplasts for photosynthesis to occur. It makes sense then that the higher the light intensity, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. This doesn't increase at a steady rate, so the line is a curve. Because the rate increases as we increase the light intensity, it means that light was limiting at the lower intensities. So we call light a limiting factor at these points. That's an important phrase to learn, and all of the other factors we're going to look at are also limiting factors. At a certain point, the rate of photosynthesis plateaus, which means it stops increasing. No matter how much brighter it becomes, the rate doesn't increase because light intensity isn't limiting it anymore. Another limiting factor has been reached. This means that something else is preventing the rate of photosynthesis from increasing. This could be any one of the three remaining factors that we're going to look at. For example, carbon dioxide concentration. Carbon dioxide is a reactant in photosynthesis, so as we increase the concentration of it, the rate of photosynthesis will also increase. This can be shown on the graph like so. At the low concentrations of carbon dioxide, this is limiting, so we say the CO2 concentration is a limiting factor at these concentrations. Beyond a certain concentration, carbon dioxide stops being the limiting factor and instead it's a different factor that limits the rate of photosynthesis. The third factor that can affect the rate of photosynthesis is temperature. All chemical reactions are affected by temperature. Increasing the temperature increases the rate of photosynthesis until it reaches the optimum temperature. After this point, the enzymes that catalyze this reaction become denatured. You can learn more about this in the factors affecting enzymes video. The final limiting factor is the amount of chlorophyll in the leaves of the plant. Chlorophyll is the green pigment found in the chloroplasts that can absorb light for photosynthesis. Reduced chlorophyll means that less photosynthesis can take place and the rate is reduced. This can happen in variegated leaves like the spider plant, which have got white stripes and therefore reduced chlorophyll. It can also happen when a plant is deficient in magnesium ions, and this causes chlorosis. Graphs aren't normally used for this, as chlorophyll isn't a variable that can be easily changed or measured externally, but it would follow a similar shape to the light and carbon dioxide graphs. This next bit is higher tier content only. If you're studying foundation, skip to the quick questions at the end. So the first thing to note is that limiting factors can and do interact with each other. It's important to be able to identify which factor is limiting the rate of photosynthesis. For example, if you were making a cake and had 100 eggs, but only 200 grams of flour, then the flour is limiting the size of the cake and is our limiting factor. It works the same way for photosynthesis. If a plant receives a high light intensity, but has a low concentration of carbon dioxide, then overall, the rate of photosynthesis will be low. This is because the carbon dioxide concentration has limited it. We can show multiple limiting factors on the same graph like this. In this graph, we've got light intensity and carbon dioxide concentration. Temperature was controlled, which means it was kept the same, for example, at 20 degrees Celsius. So let's take a look at our graph. At this part of the graph, light intensity is the limiting factor because as it increases, the rate of photosynthesis also increases. Let's take a look at the next part of the graph. What do you think is the limiting factor here? Pause and see if you can work it out. The answer is that carbon dioxide is the limiting factor. 
Here's how we know this. The blue line is 0.04% carbon dioxide. When the carbon dioxide concentration increases to 0.08, the rate of photosynthesis increases. That means that the lower concentration of carbon dioxide was the limiting factor. Now let's look up here. When it's 0.08% of carbon dioxide, what's the limiting factor here? Pause and have a think. Well, the truth is we can't work it out unless we do another experiment. Let's say, for example, that we increase the carbon dioxide concentration again, and this time we change it to 0.12% carbon dioxide. You can see that the lines on the graph are pretty much the same. That means that increasing the carbon dioxide concentration had no effect on the rate of photosynthesis, so the limiting factor is not carbon dioxide concentration. Therefore, it must either be temperature or chlorophyll. You could do another experiment to find out which. As I mentioned, chlorophyll is hard to change externally, so instead we'll change the temperature. And here we are. You can see that the early investigations were done at 20 degrees Celsius, but our final investigation has been increased to 30 degrees Celsius. We can compare this result, but only to the investigation that had the same concentration of CO2. Otherwise, we have two different independent variables. So, we can actually see that when we compare these, the rate of photosynthesis does increase when we increase the temperature. Therefore, temperature was the limiting factor in the earlier investigation. Now, I know these graphs may look hard, but with practice, I promise they'll become easier. And just one thing to point out again, is that you cannot compare results with two different independent variables. So in this situation, we were only able to compare the two highlighted results because they had the same CO2 concentration. The next piece of content is the inverse square law. This is covered in my maths and biology video at 10 minutes 48. I've linked to the right part of the video in the description below, and I suggest you watch it either after the quick questions or by opening it in a new tab. All right, let's check what you've understood. Pause the video and try the quick questions. And when you're done, press play to go through the answers. One, the graph on the right shows how CO2 concentration affects the rate of photosynthesis. Between which two points is CO2 concentration a limiting factor? So let's take a look at our graph. CO2 concentration is a limiting factor when increasing it also affects the rate of photosynthesis we can see that that happens at this point in the graph. That means that between A and B, CO2 concentration was a limiting factor. So there's our answer. Two, name two other factors that could be limiting the rate of photosynthesis in this situation. Well, there are three possibilities, light intensity, temperature, and amount of chlorophyll, any two from those. Three, on hot sunny days, gardeners should monitor their greenhouses to ensure the temperature does not get too high. Explain why in relation to photosynthesis. If the greenhouse reaches high temperatures, the enzymes that catalyze photosynthesis will become denatured. That's an important word to have in your answer. And the rate of photosynthesis will decrease. So less glucose is produced and growth of the plant is stunted. Okay. How did you do on the questions? If you study higher tier, then next up is making the most of photosynthesis. If you're on foundation, just skip ahead to how plants use glucose. I hope you've enjoyed this and thanks for watching. Bye.